What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I wanna check out, I watched the worst SummerSlam pay-per-views of all time. Now, there have been some pretty good SummerSlam pay-per-view events, and then there have been some pretty awful ones. I mean, it's it's gonna happen that way. There's not every SummerSlam is gonna be something to remember. You know, that's just part of the wrestling business as a whole. Sometimes things are good, sometimes things are bad, in particular to certain shows. Um, and since SummerSlam is this week, it only makes sense to check out some of the worst SummerSlam shows of all time from WWE. This should be a good one. Appreciate all love and support y'all shown on the channel. And we're going to get right into this one, man. In just a few weeks, the 37th annual SummerSlam is taking place in Cleveland, Ohio. And one thing I think we can all agree on is that more often than not, over its almost 40-year history, SummerSlam has always been a pretty consistent show. More often than not, SummerSlam has always been a show that has delivered, sometimes even being better than that year's WrestleMania. When mm -hmm. I think of SummerSlam, I instantly think of warm and fuzzy feelings. The classic green logo, the classic stages, the late 2000s and early 2010s when it took place in I miss the, the green and blue logo, I'm not gonna lie to you. LA every single year, I, I think back to good memories. And yeah, I do think back to some years where the show was average, you know, pretty mid, but I'm not gonna lie to you, for me it's hard to look back and think of just some horrible, just like downright dog shit SummerSlam. When it comes to WrestleMania, I can instantly tell you about WrestleMania 27 and the Ooh. trauma it caused me, but for SummerSlam, it's like, I mean, I, I guess 2012 was pretty weird, but nothing too offensive comes to my mind. So with it being SummerSlam season, I decided that I was going to go back and watch what are considered the two worst SummerSlams of all time. And little did I know that not only was I going to go back to the 90s for the first time on this channel, but I was also going to watch a pay-per-view that I actually ordered as a kid and spent most of my life thinking it was pretty decent. Uh, apparently not. Well, I watched the two worst summer slums of all time so you didn't have to let's get into it all right we begin in the 90s with arguably what is widely considered the worst SummerSlam of all time, Damn, 1995. 95? 1995 was a disastrous year in the WWF. Diesel was the world champion and nobody gave a shit. Shawn Michaels <laughs> almost died after getting jumped by a bunch of Marines outside of a bar. Business was downright horrendous. One of the worst WrestleManias ever took place. And this grimace looking mother <laughs> was the king of the ring. So SummerSlam <laughs> being bad in 95, you know, makes sense. Not really a surprise, but I, I didn't think it was going to be this bad. The show starts off and at first it's like, wow, this is this is pretty awesome. The first match of SummerSlam 95 is a Hakushi vs. 1-2-3 kid in a fast-paced banger of a match that you would probably think took place in like 2001 or something on the indie scene. The show starts off with a really good hot match and you combine that with the cozy, warm, mid-90s aesthetic, it's a pretty good time. See, even though I was negative three years old at this point, mid-90s <laughs> WWF has always had such negative three years old. <laughs> a soft spot in my heart it's always had such a cozy That's vibe funny. there's like this innocence to the product everything is so vibrant it's always just been very comforting to me and i honestly wish i was a kid during this era despite how bad it was but uh sadly that that does not save the show whatsoever this show is just filled with the most random matches featuring wrestlers and the most random gimmicks just doing absolutely nothing of value after the first match the next two hours are bad no like they are really really bad you just get whatever matches where nothing important happens even just like the big promoted matches you're just there like why is this happening undertaker takes on comma in a casket match the future godfather great sounds good why is this 17 minutes damn and wait why is he trying to pin him listen i, I love taker but mid 90s taker against wrestlers who couldn't work never worked out well yeah. who would have guessed Bret Hart, who, guess? who is the best wrestler on this roster right and either the the most or the second most over wrestler in the entire company had to wrestle a dentist for 16 minutes mm. <laughs> a dentist, who in case you haven't noticed is kane, kane, kane. yeah <laughs> yeah man he used to that was his other gimmick before he became the big red monster, the big red machine, uh, he was a dentist at one point. And hey, as a kid, a dentist would scare you, you know, especially if they're wrestling you and, you know, like, oh, man, he's going to beat you up and he's going to clean your teeth. <laughs> but yeah, he, he wrestled a dentist who could never forget. Glenn Jacobs before the CTE got to him. So yeah, for the two hours out of the two hours and 44 minutes the show takes place, it's pretty bad. But somehow, there's actually a five-star match on this show. 
The one saving grace on this show was the fact that Shawn Michaels was ready to die for the industry again on this night and had a ladder match rematch against Razor Ramon and mm. they just casually dropped a five star classic again. Growing up as a wrestling fan, you always hear about WrestleMania 10 and the ladder match between Shawn and Razor, mm -hmm. right? That's the iconic match. It's the match in the video games, it's the match they made an action figure about. That is the iconic match. But these two, a year after that match, ran it back and, and they went nuts. This is a crazy match to watch in 2024 because ladder matches are so different now, right? They're mm -hmm. straight stunt shows. Everything is set up to have some crazy stunt. But here, back here, back in the good old days, ladder matches were still just wrestling matches that happened to have ladders in there. Yeah. All the wrestlers were trying to do were win and crazy stuff that happened just happened to happen because they were trying to win, if that makes any sense. This was an absolute treat to watch. This is like the third ladder match ever and it's just them two with two ladders, no other weapons, just going off, just doing their thing. It's a pure ladder match with so many callbacks Ooh. to the first match the crowd is going crazy they're hot this might be the worst summer slam ever but this is a five-star match in my opinion easily so it's like hey if you unfortunately did buy this show back in 95 at least you got this so i was watching this i was having the time of my life it was great fantastic five out of five so then it's like okay well the first match was pretty good the latter match is a no doubt classic sure there were two hours of whatever in between but hey you know it doesn't sound that bad is it really the worst summer slam ever and no, up until here, I, I had fun watching this by all my yeah. criticism. It was still cozy. It was still fun. Not it was still cozy. pretty exciting. And we had two really, really good matches. Uh, the only issue was they still had the main event. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what is largely responsible for this uh, being considered the yeah. worst summer slap of all time. The main event for this show over the legendary ladder match was Diesel versus King Mabel for the title. Yes, before Viscera was sexually mm -hmm. assaulting the roster in the mid-2000s, hey, he was main eventing SummerSlam in 1995. To this day, it's like, what the hell were they thinking? What, why, why would this, why, why would you do this? Why would anyone think this is a good idea? You don't have to be a scientist to see these two men and be like, yeah, that's probably not going to work in a wrestling match. But in a time where Vince McMahon was doing everything he could mm -hmm. to make Diesel into his new Hulk Hogan, just like how Hulk Hogan and made his career being a fat wrestlers it was time for diesel to do the same <laughs> oh, damn. this was bad this was really bad the match starts and nobody in the crowd cares which makes sense i mean when king mabel did win king of the ring a few months ago they were literally chanting ecw when he got crowned but yo no joke 30 seconds into the match i swear to god i'm not even joking mabel is already tired tired from what breathing i i, I don't know it's mabel versus diesel it's closing SummerSlam 95 and diesel is just out there that don't even sound appealing rest in peace to mabel though but it still, you know, don't sound appealing. Or Viscera, if who, how, however you want to call him, you know, whichever character you want to call him. It just, that don't even sound appealing. It just didn't sound appealing. Even back then, it didn't sound appealing. Just the, the idea of this match. So. They're trying to do anything you can to make this match special. Just anything you can do. At one point, Diesel dives out of the ring for the industry to try to get anything out of this match. Yes, Kevin Nash, one of the laziest wrestlers ever I've ever seen in my life, dove out of the ring for this match. How he didn't tear something, I will never know. But hey, don't worry. Maybe we'll take care of that. But hey, the point is, Diesel is trying. So what does he get for trying? What does he get for risking his body to try to make this match special? Uh, Mabel almost breaks his back. I, I couldn't believe my eyes. I couldn't oh. believe my ears. Mabel at one point in this match sits on Diesel's back, but ends yeah. up sitting a little too low, and you can hear Diesel just cussing off Mabel. Yeah. Poor Nash. No, no wonder his body fell apart. He had 500 pounds of yeah. Big Mac and large fries on his back. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. I know that hurt, bro. You're laying down on your stomach, and someone that's damn near 500 pounds just plops down on your lower back oh bro that that can alter your life you know the way you walk and move for the rest of your life like bruh i know he was mad if you ever talked about sitting down on the job wow this is like one of the stupidest spots Damn. I've seen in my life. Why did Mabel just, why did he do this? What was the point of this? The WWE champion at this point had basically has a broken back. He's crippled. Mabel doesn't know what the hell is going on. And the best part about this was Nash literally told Mabel before the match to not sit on his back. And what does he do? The crowd is dead. They, they don't care about anything that's going on. And remember, oh. and remember, this was the main event of the show. We get ref bumps, Lex Luger pulls up, he's here to help Diesel, Diesel doesn't care, whatever, you know, stuff happens, and SummerSlam 95 goes off the air, and this was the main event. This was a straight up tragedy, and the fact that they actually wanted to do this match, I, I, I can't comprehend it, I just don't understand it. Why did they think this could actually work? If it wasn't for the Saudi Arabia disasters of the late 2010s, this might be the worst main event of all time. Yeah. Especially considering the fact that this was a SummerSlam, and this was the main event.
A really poor, a really bad time for the company, and as a result, a really bad show. That main event is basically the 90s equivalent of Goldberg vs. Undertaker. Yeah. Thank God HBK and Razor did what they did, but uh, imagine spending money on this back in 95. Imagine asking your mom to pay $30 to watch Ooh. Mabel vs. Diesel. I, I, I can't. Oh. Hey, I can imagine spending $40 to watch The Great Khali vs. Batista. <laughs> oh, man. We move on to 12 years later, and ladies and gentlemen, it's the other worst SummerSlam of all time. 07. SummerSlam 2007. This was a trip to look back at because this was actually a show that I ordered back in 2007. So you know what? Maybe maybe if my dumbass was alive in 95, I probably would have bought SummerSlam that year. All little nine-year-old Pav wanted for his birthday back in 07 was <laughs> SummerSlam, and boy, did he get it. This was a show that I never watched after it aired. I recorded on VHS after I ordered it, and I never went back to it. And maybe that Damn. itself should have told me that this was not a good show, but apparently not, because I legit spent the last 17 years of my life just thinking that this was always a decent show, that I, I just assumed that this was just a decent SummerSlam. Boy, was I wrong about that one. It's crazy because I was so hyped for this show back in 07. Not only was Cena and Orin gonna main event for the title and they were gonna tear the house down, they were gonna go off, not only was that like one of the biggest matches for me as a kid, Rey Mysterio was back wrestling after 10 months of being away, and if that wasn't enough, Triple H was also back after missing 8 months of action. It sounds and, like- uh, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like it's great on paper <laughs> that was about it for the card but that was enough for me the crazy part is i wasn't the only one that got bamboozled because for some reason this pay-per-view was super successful Damn. this show did more buys than summer times was an a which took place a year after and it was 10 times a better show why the hell did 540,000 people Ooh. pay to watch this ladies and gentlemen going back and watching this was rough you would think you're watching a house show from 2007 the way nothing of value actually happens here. The first match to open up SummerSlam, you know, the second biggest show of the year was Kane versus Finley. Wow, that's, that's definitely <laughs> gonna have the crowd going crazy. We had probably seen that match like 900 times on SmackDown in 06 and 07, but mm. all right, here, sure, let's open up SummerSlam with that. But okay, it's fine, whatever, that's not good enough. Okay, the next match was Umaga versus Carlito versus Mr. Kennedy, which, like, again, it was okay, but... <laughs> really? What the hell happened to the SummerSlam I love? The summer of 07 in the world of pro wrestling was very rough, in mm. case you didn't know. Not yeah. only did Chris Benoit go full Chris Benoit, the roster was completely cooked. Half he said, not only did Chris Benoit go full Chris Benoit. He went full Chris Benoit. I'm done. I'm done. The roster was suspended for doing steroids, the other half was just straight up injured. Edge was injured, HBK was injured, Bobby Lashley was injured, and Damn. never came back for like 10 years. Jeff Hardy just went MIA in the summer of 07. It was a very tough time, and as a result, so was the SummerSlam. But that's why the SummerSlam was hyped up in the first place. That's why 540,000 idiots bought this in the first place, because it featured the return of two legends, and those two legends were going to bring so much life back into the product. The first return was the long-awaited return of Rey Mysterio. After being gone for 10 months, Rey Rey was finally going to be back, adding so much life to SmackDown, and I was so excited for this. Like, that was one of the main reasons why I wanted this show. Rey returning meant a lot, and best of all, it meant that he was going to come back and destroy the same person who put mm -hmm. him out in the first place. It was going to be awesome, it was going to be fire, it was going to be fun, it was hype, it was exciting, and then Rey actually came out, and, uh... Rey, what the is this Rey Mysterio <laughs> came back looking like a monopoly piece he came back thinking he was a silver surfer and as a result this is how we saw Rey after not seeing him for 10 months why you know what to this day I blame Dominic I just know that he made his dad watch Fantastic Four with him like a week before the show and Rey saw it with his son got all amped up and excited and as a result he dressed up like this poor Rey makes his long awaited return to the ring and by the time he's in the ring everyone's just there like what the hell man over here dressed up like tin man <laughs> From the Wizard of Oz, man. What the hell is going on? Even commentary is trying to explain uh, whatever the hell this was. I know it wasn't the biggest deal, but I'm not going to lie. It just wasn't pretty. It was like, damn, Ray, maybe you should have came back at Unforgiven. Ray just looks straight up disgusting. I'm going to be honest. Luckily for him, though, the paint did wear off and he looked good in the ring. And I was happy to see him back. But the, once again, the match was just whatever. Nothing special to write home about. And it was just a little showcase for Ray Ray. And you know what? That was, that's what it was always going to be. But if any night needed more, it was this one. I remember thinking that this was going to be some crazy match, especially after how dirty Chavo did him in 06. You'd assume Ray's going to come back with a vengeance, we're going to have some fire crazy yeah. match, we're going to tear the house down. It was the same match they had at last year's SummerSlam. And that's where it's like, all right, they got me. They, they, they got they my got me. <laughs> After that, it was just down. You go. didn't get a women's battle royal, which was 
That was whatever. CM Punk and John Morrison get to squeeze a 15 minute match into 5 minutes and before you know it there's only 3 matches left and most of the time is going to be spent on Triple H's entrance. And that's where the depression hits you when you're a grown up and not a 9 year old who's just excited to watch a pay per view live. Because by the time Triple H makes his return, does his grand entrance and the hype wears down, it kind of hits you that he's just here to beat King Booker as fast as possible and get the hell out of there. This was literally SummerSlam, the house show. And the match is 5 <laughs> minutes long. Great, what an amazing return. And just when you thought things couldn't get any more disappointing, the second biggest show of the year is SummerSlam. This was the 20th annual SummerSlam. The co main event is. The Great Kylie versus Batista for the World Heavyweight Championship. Why the f did I think this show was decent for 17 years? Listen, I'm not trying to be funny or extra or whatever. And, but and that's that is you know when you're younger, you you look at things differently, you view things differently. You may think things are better than what they actually are, and then when you get older and you look back at it, you're like, hmm, that wasn't really that good. Like if y'all go back and watch some of like the the Attitude Era clips. They don't really age that well. So, it's just one of those type of things. that It just happens. When you're younger, you think a lot of things are greater than what they really are. As you get older, you understand context and, you know, motivations. Ray Kyle Lee versus Batista might be the worst match I've seen in my life. I, I am not kidding. The this is worse than Mabel versus Diesel. But at least this wasn't the main event. The Great Khali cannot move. N not only like physically can he not move, he can't do any moves except for squeeze and punch. I, I can't believe that these idiots actually had the Great Khali. And this is one of those things we knew. Vince really essentially had him on the roster because he was he was huge. That That's literally what it was. He was a huge guy. He looked physically imposing, but he wasn't good in the ring. He could barely move. But that's all it was. I will say one thing they did do right with him, unfortunately, is at the cost of Ray. If y'all remember, when the great Kali was squishing Ray's head and Ray was bleeding from the mouth, that was a scary visual. Because great Kali's hands is bigger than Ray's head. So that was a scary visual. But outside of that, we know, you know, great Kali was just there because Vince was like, he's a big foreign guy. We can easily make him a heel and, you know, book him that way main eventing in 07 i can't believe they had him as the world heavyweight champion that just shows how down bad they were in the summer of 07 and you know what i can't believe i technically paid money for a kali title defense on pay-per-view and you know what the worst <laughs> part is about this match it, it sucks it's horrible my dead grandma moves more than the great kali all that like, ah, it, it sucks we all that the worst part is it ends in a dq <clears throat> If there was ever a time to just shut up and be like, all right, man, just have the fans go Sounds about right. a little bit. Let's have a clean finish. It was this. But no, Greg Kylie is out here hitting Batista with a chair. What are we doing? I know the roster was cooked in the summer of 07, but you're telling me that Kali was the only option? And then he started, I ain't gonna lie to you, Batista beat the shit out of him with that damn steel chair. I swear Festus would have been a better option at this point. This show is bad. It, it is It is really Look at him. It's crazy to me how <laughs> under the radar this show is. Unless I just live under a rock, like I'm Patrick or something. I, I can't believe I went 17 years of my life just like, yeah, yeah, Summer Summer 7 was decent. Yeah, it was a good pay-per-view. It was whatever. No, th this is horrible. And nobody <laughs> has ever talked about this show for like any debate or conversation to ever spark. It's like people just pretend this show never existed. And I see why. It's funny, as a kid, you're so excited to watch any pay-per-view. You'll make any show you ordered as a kid mean something to you. You'll make any show good for you in that time. Because, you know, you feel special for watching it, for ordering it. But looking back at it, the only good thing on this show was genuinely the main event. Cena vs. Orton was awesome in every way. It lived up to everything it was supposed to be. Especially as a kid, even watching it now, it's everything I want a Cena vs. Orton match to be. That is the only thing that saves this show, mm -hmm. even a tiny bit. But damn, like, what the hell was this show? Like, I get it. It was injuries and everything it's not really their fault everyone got injured it is what it is but it's like damn they couldn't have cooked up anything else this was a huge trip to look back at because like i said for a long time i thought this show was decent i watched it i had a decent time in 07 and i just went the rest of my life like yeah that was a good show no it wasn't and <laughs> once again it's crazy to me how 540,000 people ordered this show Ooh. more people ordered this show than SummerSlam 08 SummerSlam 09 SummerSlam 2010 this was a very successful show and that to me it, wins, it's bro. crazy these are easily the worst summer slams of all time and they belong here no doubt about it and it kind of shows how at the end of the day though despite these being bad and these are the worst summer slams of all time compared to some other shows they aren't that bad and it kind of just shows how summer slam has been pretty consistent over the years what tripped me out was technically the worst summer slam on cage match is actually 2021 and then these two followed up and i'm like Damn. 2021 wasn't a good summer slam it was pretty whatever it was average but worst 
No way, that's the worst SummerSlam of all time. Yeah, I think I'm there's not been a lot that. of really average SummerSlams, and what sucks is a lot of those shows could have been really good if just like one or two matches were done better or had better decisions. It's like 2010 SummerSlam wasn't that bad. It's just the ending kind of puts a bad taste in everyone's mouth. Uh, I think back to like 2016, if Randy and Brock just have a really good match, no one's thinking back to this show with that many negative feelings. Same mm -hmm. with 2017, that had the show had a lot of bangers. It's just we had 15 minutes of Jinder Mahal versus Nakamura, which just stinks up the whole show. There we go. Regardless, it's pretty interesting how SummerSlam over almost 40 years has always been pretty consistent. It doesn't really have the lows as some other like you know Survivor Series or WrestleMania have. In the comments down below, though, let me know, in your opinion, what is your least favorite SummerSlam? What is a SummerSlam that you just despise, a SummerSlam you hate, a SummerSlam that you ordered maybe and you regretted it, or a SummerSlam you watched on the network and you're just like, that was a total waste of time? Let me know down below. Also, let me know down below if you guys enjoyed the trip to the 90s. Hey, this was a good one, man. I'm going to show love to the homie, Wrestling Gifts. Subscribe to him already. I'm going to go ahead and give this video a like. If you haven't already, go ahead, subscribe to Wrestling Gifts, give him a like you know and uh check out his other videos as well great wrestling content definitely check out his other videos but yeah man hopefully this year's summer slam is really good on paper things seem to line up for a great show a lot of feuds have been built over time you're interested in a lot of these matches i'm looking forward to summer slam this year i think we're in for a real good treat and uh you know hopefully it delivers so comment down below let me know some other videos y'all want me to check out appreciate all love support y'all showing on the channel road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking in with me see y'all next one peace